Now, please welcome author, wildlife ecologist, and conservation policy expert, Dr. Mordecai Ogata. Good, good evening or good day to you all. I'm Mordecai Ogada speaking to you from Kenya. I'm a, as the introduction said, I'm a wildlife ecologist and conservation writer. I want to talk to you about the sustainability of travel and how we are going about it. Well, what what goes on what what goes on today is is in travel is sale of experiences. And coming from Africa, that's what I'd like to share with you. And it's not about plugging what's sustainable and environmentally conscious and all that. I'm sure you're all aware of all that. But it's about talking about the, the reality of the experience. What exactly are we selling? And where, where is it coming from? If we go through if we go through our, our tourism experiences as they are, they come from a place about a slightly over 100 years ago, Roosevelt's journeys to Africa, Kenya, Kenya in particular is where, is where it happened. The hunting, the beautiful wildlife, beautiful landscapes, et cetera, et cetera, that, uh, that he experienced while he was there. And then how, how, was, how, was, it, um, how was it sustainable? back then and how, how how we how we draw on that so we we see the aroma of subjugation slaughter of wildlife etc and even down to, if you go further back to the explorers we saw the, the ridiculous way they'd go around africa being carried on people's backs and then we come to uganda present day and we see the same thing so we have this mantra that we talk about putting local people first and and for an african we ask, I'd, I'd ask why because they've always been first, we've always been here. The mantra of putting local people first is because we are guilty of putting them in the background for so long in our marketing, etc. Now, when we when we look when we look at what's what's been going on, we have the African cultures like the Maasai people with their with their pastoralism, livestock production, etc. We've we've seen that illustrated as being unsustainable and a part of the culture we don't want to appreciate. Yet we do embrace that culture when they're wearing all their beadwork, et cetera, to serve drinks at lodges and serve tourists. We see a lot of talk from, particularly not from tourist, tourism people, but mainly from conservation scientists talking about habitat encroachment with people when people are keeping livestock. Yet we talk about riding safaris when it's tourists on horseback hanging around uh, seeing the same wildlife. So we have, to, we have to put this in some proper perspective and, and think more carefully about it. What are we talking about? East Africa is known to be the cradle of mankind and people have always been here. So we have to, we have to think more carefully about that. Um, next slide, please. Um, if if we if we think more carefully about that, we will we will understand the power of travel. And some of, some of you here have, have spoken about it. Are very familiar with that. And we should make travel a learning experience. So the destination where you go, if it's Kenya or wherever, it's not you're not going there to be served. The destination is not your servant. It's your teacher. And 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 uh, the lesson is the the beauty of the experience. Next, please. Um, in in all the advertising materials around around uh, tourism in in Africa, particularly safari tourism, you don't see African people in peaceful contexts with wildlife. Yet it is quite common, as you can as you can see from these uh, these uh, these pictures I've I've shared with you in in, in um, Burkina Faso, Nigeria with the hyenas, Kenya with the giraffe, hyenas in the streets of Addis, uh, New Zealand in in Talek near Masai Mara giraffes hanging out by buses, et cetera. This is, this is all very common. And you also don't see the violence that happens when we try and clear out people from wildlife areas, from areas they've shared with wildlife in order to make room for tourism. So that also appears in the press. So then we come back to the, the question we had, how real is what we are selling? Um, 
and it's 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 a testament to the power of marketing that um that uh, the world the the tourism industry can today sell still sell images that are taken from 100 years ago um themes that are mostly based in tarzan really type myths and people still believe it despite the fact that we've got the internet with us today you could click on a button any day and find out what it's like in kenya you still want we still sell images of what doesn't exist and people pay top dollar for that in fact the 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 further from reality the experience is the higher the amount it commands in terms of prices uh, I, in kenya we have two tourist uh, organizations that uh, sell current blitz and type themed um, camping safari something like the movie out of Af what's in the movie out of africa the 1985 movie i think and that commands prices of around um 11 1200 per person per day to have that old world non-existent colonial adventure experience and it it i think it's it's uh it's our responsibility to sort of make a departure from that and and um how would we do it as you as you see on the slide on this on the slide that's uh, up right now we need to we need to change a number of things and these include developing new standards and definitions. Um, we need to develop new standards and definitions and for things like sustainable. We tend, sustainable is such a subjective term, but the way it's been used in media and science, et cetera, we, we've cut, got to accept it as technical, yet sustainability is something like likability, is Mordecai likable. It's ridiculous if you say, if you, if you do anything on my likability or not, but sustainability is the same kind of thing. We have to change how marketers do their messaging. Messaging about Africa must necessarily include black people. And I mean, include black people in non-subservient positions. I think if we look at the demographic of your, of tourists, sales of tours to Africa, you might find very few African-Americans in there because they don't see themselves in the marketing. They just don't see themselves. I don't know how many Hispanic people you get coming to Africa. I meet very few of them. Almost all tourists I meet from the U.S. are are white, and we need to think about why that why why that is. We need to, as we do that, we need to. Um, this will help us change how governments see their role, and we have to challenge the media on its role in the narrative. The way we talk about hunters versus poachers, encroachment versus um, horseback safaris. Isn't the difference just the race of the people doing what's being done? And most importantly, we as the people in the tourism industry must remove themselves from the conservation discourse. Conservation is to conserve the resources. Tourism is to, is to sell what is there as a result of the conservation actions. I think we really must, we really must uh, mustn't lose, lose sight of that. And then ne next slide, please. Um, then we must understand that stop sell, we stop selling myths because the reality is also beautiful and well worth selling. It's a story well worth telling. Let someone come from Africa knowing an African person, knowing about what's going on there today and the wonderful things going on. And I'd just like to share a small snippet of the reality that does exist today. This is a video from earlier this year. Please, can we have the next slide? This is a village called Kazinga in Uganda. And, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a video just showing people hanging out, doing their stuff, fetching water, um, washing clothes. You see some kids playing around. And there's buffaloes hanging out there. There's elephants. Um, and this is a very peaceful context. Um, anyone who knows about wildlife biology will tell you a buffalo or an elephant is probably the most dangerous animal we could meet in the bush in Africa. But here they are living in a peaceful context. Nobody has come to kick these people out to, to make room for a tourism facility or anything like that. There's no need for the violence that has become so common. So we must challenge ourselves. And I think we can do a lot better than what we are doing now. And um, with those few words, I thank you. And I'd welcome your feedback through, through either of those contacts. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mordecai. Thank you. And thank you for that very powerful message. I uh, came upon your YouTube video, uh, I think a few months ago, when I heard you talk about, I think you were introduced as an anti-conservation activist, which I don't know if that's how you want to call yourself, but I, I, got, I was so taken by it that I said, I really wanted you here. And so here's a point. Mordecai was actually supposed to be here in person. The global shame that our visa regime is in US, the first appointment he was getting was 2023 for a visa. So this is true for, and, and I know this personally because my family is from India, the wait to get a visa to US has crossed, uh, Peden is here somewhere, I think it's like 600 days at this point, to get an appointment to get a visa to US. So I know US travel is working really hard on it. All of you in the travel industry have a lot of power, so please do everything you can to tell the government to please put effort behind getting people visas and, and staffing um, so that people can come to US. So that's the reason why he's on video versus actually coming in person. The question that I had uh, as a, as a follow-up is, um, it's a very powerful message. When uh, people talk about Africa, they talk in sort of a generic term. There's a blog that I actually like a lot. It's called Africa as a Country, which is a, which is a, which is a, a sort of ironic name, and it talks about um, how people think about Africa. So my, my, my question is when, um, in, in the pandemic, there was, there's been a bunch of effort to uh, get locals to travel within Africa. So historically, Afri the, the marketing of tourism in Africa is very much geared towards people outside of the continent. Do you think it's a good thing that domestic tourism is becoming a, big, a, a bigger push and how real it is? And how do you think that will change the message that you are putting out, which is, uh, which is a real connection with locals? But if, if, if the continent starts traveling within the continent and they're welcome, then how does that change the equation? Yeah, that, that, that's a very important point. And, and uh, the fact is there's, there's been a lot of intra-Africa travel always, whether on foot and pastoral is moving with their, their livestock, traders, this kind of thing. But the way we modeled tourism simply deleted that. It's simply, it's like we refused to see it. And the pandemic, has been a difficult time, but it's provided some really valuable lessons. Um, the other thing is that foreign tourists, have, especially from the West, have always been given this line that you going to Africa, somehow you're visiting saves wildlife. Even those who come to hunt think their hunting saves wildlife. And this is a complete fallacy, complete myth. It's rubbish. So um, no less than the New York Times wrote that wildlife numbers will plummet because of the pandemic and no tourists. But this hasn't been the case. And I think this has given a lesson to us that let's make travel easy, pleasant, educative for everybody, regardless where they come from. Because when we target people from a particular market, I think it sort of defeats the purpose of traveling in building the human, uh, expanding human horizons and, and educating people. So I think, I think the, the fact that we've recognized intra-Africa travel or even in, intra-country travel as being an important thing is, is, is a great lesson or a great takeaway or silver lining from the cloud that the pandemic has been. And I think it, it might give us the necessary kick to sort of start thinking about things differently. Because what we've been doing so far is, is sort of an anachronism. Um, so many fields, agriculture, education, et cetera, tech has changed beyond recognition in the last 50 years, but um, travel to Africa hasn't changed appreciably in 100 years. And what do you think is the role of tourism boards in African countries? Because at the end of the day, your message is as important for the tourism boards as it is for people who look at Africa in a certain way. So the, are the tourism boards there? You think there's a lot of work to do there? Yes, absolutely. And um, if, if, if I'm to sort of point fingers, the biggest finger would be pointed at, at them. Even the, and I'd include the, particularly the Kenya Tourist Board. We've been so busy, rather than en enhancing the experience, easing regulations, etc., we've put so much resources into trying to contrive an experience or trying to gauge what we think foreigners might like about our country. 
And um, one, of, one of the most pleasant tourism experiences I've had was traveling to India and various places, rural Madhya Pradesh and, 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 and um, south, south in Karnataka. And it's because everything I saw, of everything I saw, there was nothing that was being done for me. They were doing their things and I'm just a participant who came to, to take part in it. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything uh, sort of made, a dance made to, because I was there or food made because I was there. You go into the highest class hotels in India, they will serve you Indian food. They will not serve you <laughs> Western food and that kind of thing. It's very nice food, but it is their food. And, and I think little things like that make the whole difference and make travel, I think, uh, make it what it should be. So uh, let me ask this last question. What gives you, so this is obviously the travel industry that's here, the travel industry watching online, what you're saying. What gives you hope? Is there, is there any major thing today that gives you hope that things are changing, will change? What gives me hope? First of all, it's, it's forums like this where, where, where the travel industry comes together and sort of starts brainstorming over what we should do, what comes next. It means... The travel industry has realized that what's been going on in the past sort of needs to change, we need to grow and all that. So meetings like this give me hope. And the fact that someone like me, who is um, not part of the industry at all, is invited to give some insights, this, this gives me a lot of hope. And even going forward, I, I do look forward to getting some feedback from Skift and your various members on how we should think about these things and how we should treat things like sustainability is a is a guy with his herd of goats any less sustainable than a tourist flying 10,000 miles to have cold champagne in the hot north of Kenya who's more sustainable thank these, are, you. It, these are things that bother us but it's very necessary questions okay thank you again Mordecai and thank you for that important message Appreciate wonderful it. thank you yeah.